This is Studio Talk, and I'm Barry Johns. And as you can see, I've got my shirt ready. The family's heading over to Clearwater Beach today to spend a couple of days in the great Florida sunshine. And it's early in the morning here. The family's still asleep, so I thought this would be a great time to make this video for you guys. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating routing hardware through Totomex. When I say hardware, I mean, you know, that stuff back behind me. Uh, I'm going to show you how we're going to route it on the recording way in. In other words, you're recording the effect of the hardware and then also routing back through your DAW as hardware inserts. So I've already done two videos on Totomex. So let me say this right away, and this is very important. If you've not watched those videos, and if you don't have a solid understanding of the basic fundamentals of Totalmex, do not watch this video yet. You need to go back and watch both of those videos. I'll put a link to them down in the description below. It's important that you have a foundation before you get to this. Otherwise, you're just going to end up more confused if you are already confused. And I imagine if you're watching this today, you are probably have struggled along the way with Total Mix, and I'm here to help you get through that as quickly as possible. Okay, so if you've not watched the first two videos, I cannot stress this enough. You must watch and understand what I show or what I demonstrate in those first two videos that I did. There will be a link to those videos down in the description below. It is not in your best interest to jump into what I'm about ready to show you today if you do not have a solid understanding of the fundamentals of it. So spend the time, be willing to do the work, and go watch those videos. So the goal is after today that you're going to clearly understand how to route hardware uh, or really route anything amongst the channels of your Total Mix uh, session. So here is an example. You see that I probably most likely got more inputs than you have depending on the interface that you have. So don't get hung up on that. You can see I'm using a Fireface UFX Plus. But I also have a Ferrofish Pulse 16 connected to that via Matty. So if you don't understand Matty and maybe that's just something that you don't even really uh, have any knowledge of whatsoever, just see it as additional I.O. really is that simple. It's another digital way of communicating between devices, you know, that has a lot more options than let's say something like ADAT, which also basically fundamentally, as far as concept goes, uh, offers the same type of additional connectivity between using multiple devices other than just your interface. If you have a Babyface Pro as an example, you're only going to see the inputs available to you there. So don't worry about whether you see me talking mad or anything. You don't have to understand any of that. Just understand that's how you would route it if you had it physically connected to your particular RME interface, okay? So you can see right here I'm recording this through Mic 9 on the front of my Fireface UFX Plus. And, uh, and that is the mic source that's being done right now. And so if we go over here, well, let me go back to Total Mix real quick before I show you Studio One. Across through here, you can see the names that I've given uh, to the first 16 channels of my UFX Plus. If I go down here and select names, now you can see Maddie 1, and I'll scroll over there, Maddie 1 through 16 as an example. And I've got all 16 um, uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, connected to my Fairfish Pulse, and you can see these are all the various hardware pieces that I have connected. So as an example, here in MADI-1 as an example, you're going to see a, a WALA two-way in MADI-1. Now, so now that you understand that, and same thing goes for my outputs down below. Again, these are the inputs of my interface, and these are the outputs of my interface. Uh, and that's the way you want to look at it, right? And so basically everything we've got up here, we've got duplicated down below because I'm going in and out of the same corresponding channels. In other words, I'm going out of Maddie, Maddie 1 and into Maddie 1 for the WA2A as an example. Now you don't have to do that for most digital audio workstations, but it's a better way of working. You do have to do that. You have to use the same number I.O. Uh, if, you, if you're using Pro Tools for hardware inserts. Um, but I have separate videos on that that you can go watch. Now, I have set up the Studio One session here as an example where I've created the inputs of the various pieces of hardware that I may choose to route in this particular video as an example so that you can see how that's done. Um, you can see here where my Mic 9 is coming in right here. You can see Mic 9. You can see Maddie 1 is a WA2A. 
My um, WAEQP, which is a Pultec style EQ, is four. And then I've got a WA73 on eight, a DBX1 to 60 on Maddie 11, and then so forth as you go through that. So some of the other pieces are stereo, so there's no point in connecting them here because I only have one signal coming in, and that would be my mic. Now, if you're just curious, I'm also recording this at the same time in Logic. It's actually recording over here where I've got, now this has nothing to do with what I'm uh, showing you today, but I'm coming out over here of Maddie 37 and 38 because I can, I can choose any particular I.O. I want that's not connected to it and route it however I want. And over here you can see in Logic Pro that if I were to go into my I.O. labels as an example, and I scroll down through here and I find my input 37, Matty 37 and 38. You're going to see here where I've labeled that Studio One. And that is the corresponding input here. So I'm actually recording my voice over here. So I'm recording my voice. Actually, I've got it routed to two different digital audio workstations at the same time. Now, this is just more of an FYI. Really doesn't have anything to do with whatsoever we're teaching you today because what we're going to teach you today is all in Studio One. So let's get started. Let's say, for example, that we want to route mic 9. We want to route that over to the DBX160, which is in MADI 11. So let's go back to Total Mix. And again, we can see our DBX160 right there. Click the name, and you can see where that's MADI 11, all right? So now we want to go over here to our mic 9. And we want to go down to here, and we want to choose MADI 11. And then we're going to bring that volume up, and now you can see that that is now being routed to the DBX160, of which you can also see from the camera view, where you can see the yellow and the red lights coming up. That is the DBX160. Well, you say, Barry, it doesn't seem to be doing anything because I'm not hearing anything. Well, there's a reason for that. Let's go back to Studio One. I'm only monitoring through the mic 9 right now, so I'm going to... I'm going to Turn that off, and then I'm going to turn on monitoring through the DBX160, and you'll see very quickly where it's being processed by that. Okay, so now we're back over here, and so now my mic is being routed through the DBX160. Now, I want you to take note here at the same time. You can always record your original track, whatever it may be. This is an example of a voiceover for the purpose of this video. It could be an acoustic guitar. It could be an electric guitar. It could be anything. You can keep your original. That way, if you find that you've overdone it on the way in, well, you've always got your original to revert back to so that, um, you know, that if you need to redo it again, you just send it out of your digital audio workstation via hardware insert and then route that back out to the DBX160 again. Or maybe you realize you didn't like that 160. You wanted to do it through an 1176 or an LA-2A style. Then you can always go back and do that again. So one thing, if I were to hit record right now, you can see where it's going to be recording. My Here's my mic 9 up here, my voiceover, right? But it's also recording the DBX160. Now, if you liked at the end of that recording, you happen to like what you got on the DBX160, then just, you know, make this voiceover inactive and hide it. And if you ever need to go back to it, it's there for you whenever you want. So let's hit stop here, for example. We don't need that anymore. We'll undo that. So now my so now I'm recording, I just recorded my original voiceover, and I've also recorded the voiceover being processed through the DBX160. Well, let's say, for example, we wanted to go out of the DBX160 and into the Pultec style EQ here, which is in MADI 4. So I'd be going out of the mic, into the DBX160, out of the DBX160, into the Pultec EQ. Well, let's go back over here to Total Mix. And now you're going to see where I've got it here, DBX160 and the microphone. So now we're going out of the mic into the DBX160. Now we want to go into this Pultec style EQ, and I've forgotten which MADI channel that is, and so that's MADI 4. So out of the DBX160 as an example, if I go down to here, and I choose MADI 4, and then I bring this up, well look, now I'm routing into the WA uh, Pultec style EQ. And so if I go back over here to Studio One as an example, I'm going to unmute it from here, and then I'm going to do the listen in over here, and I'll hear the effect of the mic going from microphone to the 160, out of the 160, into the Pultec EQ. 
All right, so here we are in the Pultec EQ. I'll start turning some dials. I got to reach forward so I understand that mic is over my head. So I'm going to lose a little bit of signal here, but you can clearly hear where that's being processed by the 160. You know, I can bypass it there. I'm, uh, I'm being processed by the Pultec EQ, I meant to say. I can bypass it there if I choose to. So now you've got this particular setting. So what we have here, so if I, again, I can hit record here if I want to. And well, let's undo that and go back to zero. That'd probably be easier. Um, and I can hit record here. And now I'm going to be recording, not necessarily saying you'd want to do this, but these are just options that you have. And you can determine later on how you would creatively utilize that. But my original voice is being recorded just with just the microphone. And then down here, the microphone is going through the 160. And then right here, the microphone is going through the 160 and the uh, Pultec EQ. So it's recording all of those. And um, so if you say, for example, maybe you just, maybe you felt like maybe your EQ wasn't right, but you felt good about the compressor, well, then you can always go with the voice back to the compressor and reprocess that through the EQ again later on. Hopefully that makes sense to you. The more you use hardware inserts, the more in your workflow, the more this these things will make sense to you as you go forward. So let's go back to my original voice. Now we feel like I feel like I'm missing something. Go back to the original voice. So now you can see where I've got that going from mic nine to the DBX 160 and to the EQPA, okay? Or the WA EQP, which is a pull textile EQ. All right, so now I'm going to undo what I just did. So I'm going to start here with the DBX160, and I'm going to take it away from the Pultec. So you can see here that's going to MADI 4. If I just bring this all the way down again, it has now voided out that routing, so that routing is no longer happening. Same thing if I come over here and I click on MADI 11, which is the DBX160, and I bring that all the way down, it is no longer being routed to anything at this point. Now let's say, for example, not that you necessarily want to do this, you may find a creative use for this. So let's say I want to route my microphone to several sources at the same time. Let's show you how to do that. Now where this type of workflow may come in handy is in like headphone mixes as an example, right? And so ultimately I've got my, my mic here. Let's say I want to route that microphone to the WA2A, which we already know is MADI1. Over there you can see MADI1 right there and my WA2A is MADI1. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to MADI1 and I'm going to route that up there. So now that's going to MADI1. Well, let's say, for example, I also want to route it back to that DBX160. Here I can go from here and I can go down to MADI11 because that is our 160 and we can see it highlighted down below. So that's a, that's a other quick indicator for us. And I bring that up. Now I'm going to the WA2A and the DBX160, but they're not going, in other words, one is not going into the other. This is almost like a Y cable, like you've just split that signal out into two different sources. So if I come back over here to Studio One as an example, I've got the WA2A coming in, again being done by the WA2A, which is a uh, LA2A style. You can see in the meters over there in the camera vi um, display where the meters are moving. And that's being um, compressed as an example. So let's go over to the 160. And now we're listening to the 160. And so uh, we're not trying to evaluate pieces of gear and don't, don't evaluate that because the, the settings are not right on that 160. I'm sorry, on that LA2A. So uh, don't worry about it if they sound so different. That's not an example of what you would actually experience with a piece of hardware. We're just demonstrating the routing here. And of course, I'm back to my original voice over here. And so, as you can see there, I'm routing to both of those. Now, let's use this as an example of why you just don't go willy-nilly in here and start moving faders up and down when you don't have an understanding of where things are going to. Because you may find that you're hearing things at time and you're, you're trying to figure out, why in the world am I hearing that? It's so illogical. I shouldn't be hearing it. It's probably because at some point you've raised that fader and... Uh, and it's caused you problems in the routing. So if I go down to here, I can see where I'm, this, this particular channel here, this is my mic nine, is being routed to two different sources. So if I'm, if I'm hearing something that I don't wanna hear, it's more than likely, a, I've probably forgot at some point before this, I uh, had routed to that channel not knowing what I was doing. So if I go back to Maddie one, let's say I never meant to go to the LA2, I can just bring that back down 
And now it's no longer being routed to MAT81 because I took it all the way down and it's just going to 11 as an example, right? And so if I get there and I choose that, now if I bring that down, it's no longer going to 11. So I'm going to do some more basic routing again and show you a little bit of redundancy. As an example, let's say for example, I want to route this to that LA2A, right? So I'm going to go to the LA2A, which is MADI1. We can see their output down there. I'm going to MADI1 and I bring that up. Now I'm going to the LA2A as an example. Let's go back over here to Studio 1. Okay, so now I'm back into here. So I'm going to unmute this. And then I'm going to um, listen. Now this is the LA2A uh, being processed here as an example. I'm going to bring it down to where it's not being um, reduced as much. And now we should have a lot of peak reduction. So we're going to go back this way. And let's see what we've got here. And I'm going to keep bringing that up to where I'm just taking off a few dB. Now the hard part about this is I'm having to go underneath that microphone. Now we can see here where our level is quite hot. And if we go over here and we look at um, our WA2A here, as far as what's happening there, you can see that this is higher than that. So we're going to bring down that volume here in the um, WA2A to where it's not sending as hot of a signal out. So I'm no longer hitting that peak anymore uh, like I was before. And so now I've got a more manageable level. That may even be a little bit too much. Uh, but, but anyway, you can see where I'm compressing the living daylights out of this thing. So we're going to bring that back down and only maybe hit just a little bit there. And we can see there that I probably need to bring my output back down just a little bit. And so now we've got more of a manageable. It's still probably a little bit too hot, but you can see how you would adjust that as you're, as you're going through this. Now let's go back and let's route that. Uh, we're going to route this over to the Pultec EQ, which is going to be MADI4, if you remember. Go over here and see MADI4. And we're going to come out of that and go into MADI4, and we're going to bring that up. And so now the microphone is going from the mic to the to LA2A style, and then now coming over here to the Pultec. So let's go back over here to Studio One. Do a listen in on the pull tech. So now that I'm bypassing it there, you can see, and you can get an idea from there. So now I can choose to, to raise that level or do whatever I need to do um, and be able to get that level where I need it to be. So, or not, not level, I meant as far as the EQ, EQ that however I want. Again, I can turn it on. It, right now it's off and I can do whatever I need to do. Ooh, that's a real boof, woofy, woofy, woof, woof, woof. woof. So now we're going to deal with uh, making sure that we're doing our gain staging properly within Total Mix. So we're going to take mic 9 here and we're going to route this through uh, this 1176 style compressor over here which is in MADI 6. So let's go back over here and we're going to choose MADI 6 as an example. And we can see down here where that WA76 is being routed to right there. And we're going to bring that level up. Now we're not hearing that being routed yet because if I go over here to uh, Studio 1, I'm only listening to this particular channel. But if you notice here, I noticed it in Total Mix, but here's another indicator. We've got too hot of a signal happening here. And so one of the things we want to do within Total Mix is to make sure that our levels are um, comparable. And you can see here the level coming from the mic input, the, the signal we've got going there is lower. So we're sending a hotter signal to the 1176. So if we bring this down as an example, we've now got a more comparable level overall, uh, where it's roughly, give or take, about the same. Now, if you had um, input and output levels on your devices, you could adjust this that way as well. So understand that. Okay, so we're not listening to 1176 yet because um, we don't have it available to listen to yet. So we're going to unmute here, or unmute here, I should say. Now we're going through the 1176, and you can see here where some of the peaks are being hit. And then you can, uh, you know, overall check your levels. And you can see our levels are roughly the same right there coming in on the input. Now we can go back to Total Mix and monitor our levels ultimately within this. So if I start to bring up my output on my 1176, uh, now you're going to see 
that being somewhat hotter here. So we're still a little, we're still okay. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but if you're going to round it to something else, you don't want it too hot either. But you want to keep a relatively, you know, decent level going through uh, each each process as far as part of the way. Okay. And so now we've got that output. If we go back in here to Studio One as an example, we can see that we're probably going too hot right there, right? Probably going too hot. So let's go back over here to Total Mix and let's bring that output back down. And again, if we try to stay here, again, I was trying to deceive you a second ago to see if you would catch that. But ultimately here now we've got that comparable level happening between my original mic signal and this. So we've got good proper gain staging happening along the way. So now we're going to go out of this WA-76 and we're going to go into, uh, what are we going to go into? Let's go into the, uh, let's, let's, go, let's go back to the Pultec EQ, all right? And so here we're going to go back over here to Total Mix and we're going to go into our EQP right here, which I think is MADI 4, it is. So now we're going to go down here to MADI 4 and we're going to bring that up. And so right out of the gate, because I was able to get my first gain staging right, the rest is going to be fairly comparable. The only differences here is going to be affected by the boost uh, that you may get. In other words, if you're boosting a lot of frequencies, that's going to raise the level. Uh, so there's some things that you'll have to consider there too. So now we're not listening to the effect of that yet because we're not listening to it over here. Take this off. Bring this on. So now that's being processed by the um, the WA um, Pultec EQ right here. And so now we've got a level there. Now ultimately we've got a little bit of a hotter signal here, probably hotter than what we want. And so because we're doing that, the best way to probably do that is to go back to here and we've got our MADI 4 signal is bring that down just a little bit until now we've got some comparable levels happening across the board. Let's go back here to Studio One and we can see here that we're still in an acceptable range. Probably a little bit too hot, but there's not a lot of variance between these. If you needed to, you could bring that back down just a little bit more and get the overall vibe of that. And so now what we're doing is we're, we're routing this mic 9 into the 1176 style compressor and then going into this Pultec style EQ. And so all of those things are happening, um, but we've got our... We've got good gain staging happening across the board. We can see here that we've got comparable levels. So in theory, I should be able to mute this, unmute that, and not have a huge volume peak, as well as unmute this, or mute, and unmute this. And so overall volume, now obviously tonality of things are being affected. We can here get the effect of the EQ that the EQ had on the original voice. And then back over here, we can get all three of them together as an example. And just like before, as I showed you before, of course you could go back and you could record these however you wanted and use them however you want to be able to do that. All right, and so that's one of the ways of making sure that you've got proper gain staging. Again, it doesn't have to be done within Total Mix. If you have uh, ins and outs of your, um, or I'm sorry, imp uh, input levels and output levels of each device, then you could do it that way within your hardware. So let's go back over here and let's get back to our original voice and now we've got our original voice. So I hope that this has helped you understand some fundamental routing as well as some gain staging within Total Mix. Now I'm going to show you one last thing. Let's say for example this particular routing that we've got here, that's something that you want to use all of the time. You want to, you want to be able to go back to that all of the time and it's something you're going to use like an Every session, every session you're going to want to route your microphone through an 1176 and then through this particular EQ. It could be any, any combination of anything there, right? Well, that's one of the reasons you've got snapshots. There's two ways to do it. you got your snapshots over here. So, for example, here I could go snore this, snore this, store this as mix 5 as an example, okay? And so now if I'm starting, I, I know that if I go back to mix 1, I'm automatically back to... Um, just just no processing whatsoever. But then if I want to go to mix five as an example, now I'm going back through um, that, that compressor and that EQ. So I've got that stored in there. So that's something I'm using all the time. You've got up to eight of those 
that you can do for different things. Now, another way to do that would be to go over here and to save as a workspace. And here we can type, uh, we'll say total mix example, right? And save that. So now we've saved that and you have unlimited, just due to the, the storage you have on your hardware, to, on your computer as an example, wherever you're storing these things. Again, we're gonna go back to my, or, or to mix one, which is basically square one for me. Now, if I go over here and I say load workspace, discard the changes, yes, I wanna discard them. And I can go down here and I can see total mix example. And then bam, now I'm back to that routing again where it's going through all of those devices. So you've got up to eight you can do here and you've got unlimited that you can store within your, um, you know, within your, your workflow. And if you happen to have the ARC uh, USB controller, makes recalling those so much easier and just really makes it a joy to work with. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, well, let's see what we're gonna do in the next video. Thank you for watching this video and more importantly, I hope you've learned something today. I'm gonna continue to make more videos on Total Mix. My goal is to make this easy to understand for those of us who may be manual challenged. And so ultimately, uh, I struggled in the early days of Total Mix until I finally, what I call, cracked the code of which I started with in video one and video two. And once you get that understanding, then you can jump into this side of it because it is a very, very, very powerful tool to use in your studio. And it's really only limited by your imagination. But to get there, you've got to have a solid understanding of it. And if you're like me, you have not found the videos made by Army very helpful at all. If anything, I thought they confused things more than they helped. So if you like the things I talk about today, do me a favor, leave some comments down below. Uh, whether you liked it or not, I guess leave some comments down below and tell me what you think and tell me, give me some other things that you'd like to see me focus on in these videos as we progress forward. I understand that these videos are not going to be big, big viewed videos or whatever. My purpose is to genuinely help you folks out there. So do me a favor, if I have helped you, subscribe to the channel, like, you know, all of that stuff. Do it, it kind of helps me grow and I'd appreciate your support. But until next time, I hope you have a great day because I'm going to have one because I'm going to the beach, baby.